We have green, we have blue, and what comes after blue? Yellow! No, purple of course, my favorite color. Two years later, and after a ton of requests, I think it's finally time to continue this series, which is using every single marker that I own in one specific color and use them all in one drawing, like I've done with the green and blue. I've looked in every corner of my art room and I picked out every single purple color marker that I own and could find. And let me tell you, it is a lot. I'm not sure if all of these markers will fit on camera, but let's give it a go. We got Copic markers, Pro markers slash Winsor Newton, Artessa, Spectrum Noir, Illustrator and Triblend, more Spectrum Noir, the really old one, Letra Set, Flex and Tria markers, a few Touch 5 markers. Fortunately, there were no purple artist loft markers, so I don't have to deal with those. Lastly, we have the brand with the most purple markers that I own, which is Uhuhu. And these are only the brush markers. As you might recall, I recently got a huge set of Uhuhu markers, 380 I think, and these are all the purple and violet markers from that set. Yeah, let's watch them and let's find out how many markers I am actually gonna have to put into one single illustration. Something that I noticed when doing the swatching is how hard it is to determine what is actually a purple color, especially when seeing a warmer tone and a cooler tone next to each other. There were a lot of colors that I was a bit hesitant about, since they were either too blue or too pinkish. Some of them I kept because I needed color variation. Also the Uhuhu markers, which I love are very tricky since the colors on the caps rarely matches the actual color of the ink. Some color names even say purple but they look super pink. And after going through them all, deciding which one that could stay, which one should go, we are left with 76 markers. Not as many as I first expected but still it is a lot. And to make it somewhat organized and easier for me to find certain colors, I am dividing them into different tones, darker tones, lighter tones, cooler, warmer, and so on. Alright, so let's get started with this illustration. I did a few thumbnails to sketch out a few ideas. To me, purple is kind of a magical color, so I wanted to make a piece with a magical vibe. I was imagining sort of like a fairy forest. I wanted there to be water and twisted old trees and mushrooms and flowers and a crescent moon and cats, of course. And as usual, I'm doing the sketch digitally in Procreate, which is one of the many things that I've learned by using Skillshare, which happens to be today's sponsor. So thank you Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of creative classes to inspire and help you make 2022 a year of creative and personal growth, illustration, photography, or even baking. If you have a specific skill that you're trying to learn or improve, Skillshare is the perfect place to go. The classes are both engaging and easy to follow. I especially enjoyed this class, Illustrated Journaling, 14 Days of Prompt by Dylan Merswinski, How to be creative in a calm and pressureless way by art journaling. I always struggle to do personal art just for me, just for fun, because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So this class was super helpful for me with some great tips how to become more relaxed in my art. And you too can start exploring your creativity today, the first 1000 people to sign up by using my link in the description box below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. There is always something new to learn. So this is what I ended up with, a magical cat glade. I am terrible at naming my art, but we have jungle cat ruins and mysterious cat pond, so magical cat glade will fit right in there. But I love all the different details and I tried adding as many as I could so that I would have a lot of space to add in all the different purple colors. 
Also, if you would like me to continue this series of all my markers in one specific color, in one illustration, please leave a like on this video, maybe a comment. It really helps me out knowing what you would like to see. Also, also, this line art will be available as a downloadable coloring page on my Patreon for my artsy cat tier and up, if you would be interested in that. I'm starting with the background, the sky. I wanted a nice gradient night sky where I could add some stars to later. Usually I try to limit my colors a bit using fewer colors maybe and reusing them in different parts of the drawing to make it more cohesive. Here though, I just try to cram in as many markers in one little area as possible and then I put them to the side just to keep track of the markers that I have used. I also check them off on the swatch list that I made earlier. It makes it a little easier for me to plan out the drawing and which colors that I have left to work with and which color to add to certain areas. There is a lot of planning going on here. This time I didn't have as many bad markers to work with, almost none of the touch by markers worked and there is also no purple artist loft marker, so I am mainly working with good quality markers, which I do appreciate. I could have made this challenge only with the Uhuhu markers and it would have been challenging enough. But the biggest challenge actually when working on this piece was to not turn it into a big purple blob. It is the least amount of markers that I worked with in this series, but so far purple has actually been the most difficult color to work with. It was hard to add contrast and shading without making everything muddy. It might be because it is a night scene, I want it to be somewhat dark, but not too dark, I need lighter areas areas to keep the contrast, so I think it was really good practice for me, I really needed to think and plan out where to put certain colors, I also wanted a good balance of warm and cool tones, some colors do look very pink, but it is only because they are next to a cooler purple, so I was constantly balancing light and dark and warm and cool tones. I had a few Copic markers, V91 and V95, in the more dusty purple color, like a warm grayish tone. I am very happy I had these colors since they have a more of a earthy tone that would be perfect for coloring the rocks in the background and also the cats. They were also great for toning down some colors, especially on the tree trunks, to make them look a little more natural and not so vibrant. So the two other pieces were made about two years ago and I noticed that my art style hasn't really changed that much. That was one of my concerns when deciding to continue this series, that it's been too long, that my style would have changed too much, but the style itself hasn't really changed that much. I feel though that I was able to add in a bit more details to this one, at least compared to the green one, more smaller details, I think I'm better at layering the different objects to create depth. I've been creating a lot of coloring pages since, so I think I've gained some practice there. Something that has changed a bit though is how I draw cats, I don't really draw them this way anymore, I mean it's not that big of a difference, I mainly draw the eyes and the ears and the shape differently, but I want them all to be cohesive, so I drew the cats in the same style as the other drawings. I was thinking a bit about the story behind this scene. I think my overall idea with this series is that the scenes are connected to each other, like the jungle scene is connected to the mysterious pond. If you walk from the ruins, you will end up by the edge of the cliff above the pond. Then we have this scene that I think is connected to the pond as well. The water coming from this little stream will lead to one of the waterfalls by the pond. 
And is it the same cats too? There are six cats in each piece, so they might be the same, or they are all different and they are the ones guarding these magical places. So now I just made it difficult for myself because now I have to think how the next pieces I create in this series will be connected to each other, but I think I already have an idea for the next color and it might work. As you may have noticed, there are these little lanterns to which I've added a ring around it where I haven't added any colors yet. I will add a light purple around it to make it look like there is this light spreading around the lantern. I think it will add to the magical vibe. Also, there is a little cat statue. I didn't make it as much in focus in this piece as in the other two, but I wanted to add it in to make it fit with the other. I kind of regret that I didn't integrate it more with the scene. I just had an idea that I could have made a waterfall coming out from the statue. Honestly, while I was coloring this, I got so many ideas how I could have made things differently. Why didn't I add crystal? There should be crystals in a purple magical place. If I'm gonna be completely honest, I was just recovering from a nasty cold when making the line work, so my brain may not have been working at its full potential, but I also find it kind of comforting seeing things to improve, since that means that I have improved. I think it really came together when adding the stars and white details to the illustration. It gave it that extra spark and shimmer that it needed. I've had so much fun with this drawing, even though it was a bit tricky getting a good balance in the contrast, but I think I learned a lot from it. It feels great to continue this series, hopefully there will be another edition pretty soon, don't want to wait another two years for the next one. I hope you enjoyed this video and the art, let me know what you think, feel free to subscribe to my channel and support me over at Patreon, it really helps me out. Thank you so much for watching, I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats, bye!